Hi and welcome to the second video in our investigation design series. Today we're going to be talking about quantitative observational investigation designs in psychology. So again, it's really important that you understand each of the three investigation designs, that you can talk about them, talk about the um, advantages and disadvantages and also the differences between them. So um, these are our three, just to recap, we have already talked about the experimental method um, and now we're on to the quantitative observational. Next time we will discuss qualitative. So um, with this investigation design, it's used if a researcher chooses to collect quantitative data, remembering that's numerical data, um, to observe pre-existing criteria and variables. So um, yes, this is numerical information, so it could be things like height, weight, percentages, blood pressure, um, and this kind of data makes it easier and faster to summarise and interpret the information collected. So the essential features of this investigation design. Number one, the researcher observes um, the outcome of a natural variation in a factor of interest. Now that will make more sense once we've had a look at some examples in class. Um, the second one, it involves the collection of quantitative data by observing pre-existing criteria and variables. Okay, so think about um, as a different experiment, I guess observing the number of cars on a road or the number of red cars on a road. That criteria already exists and you are just simply observing it and recording it. Um, now this is used when it's either unethical, expensive or impossible to set up an experimental design. This can investigate the differences between groups, associations between variables and also single cases. There is the presence of an independent and dependent variable still and you can still have a control group. The main difference here is that random allocation or random assignment is not present. So it's a really key difference between this and the experimental design. Now the difference, some more differences I suppose between the experimental design and this quantitative observational is that the treatment already pre-exists in the two groups. So um, in an experiment we know that we manipulate those groups to either the experiment or the control group. Um, but in this design, those groups already exist. Okay, so for example, you could be finding out whether someone's gender affects their memory. Now, gender is pre-existing. You can't try and randomly assign people on the day to however the research is feeling. They already exist. Um, another example could be finding out attitudes to smoking. So you can't randomly allocate people to smoking or non-smoking groups. You would land yourself in big ethical um, problems there. Okay, the advantages of this method. Um, number one, it allows the variables to be investigated that are impossible with the experimental design, so that's an advantage there. And also some kinds of behaviour can only be observed in the naturalistic setting. Now this is also handy because it means you're not trying to say, you know, in an experimental design you have to say, well this is what happened in the lab and we're pretty sure it's going to happen in the real world. Well, in this experimental design, you are in the real naturalistic world. You're observing something as it happens in, you know, nature, which is great. Now, the disadvantages. Now, because you aren't um, randomly assigning people to groups, you can't really infer that strong cause and effect relationship because there is a strong chance that other variables have gotten in the way there. You also can't replicate the findings as the same situation can't naturally occur again, remembering that you haven't been able to control all the extraneous variables in that situation. Um, it doesn't allow for generalisation of findings to the general population because you can only apply it to the sample that were in that setting at the time, knowing that you also can't replicate it as well. Um, another disadvantage is that observer bias may influence the results. So because the researcher is having to observe something and record it or measure it, there is some degree of interpretation there and that can influence our results. Now just to recap, we have now covered the first two investigation designs and up next is the qualitative method. If you would like more information and examples, please see me or any of these resources. See you next time.